from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Week. Now, here's John Furrier. Hello everyone, this is theCUBE's exclusive coverage here in New York, Blockchain Week New York. Hashtag blockchain NY, this is the Cube. I'm John Furrier, your host. Our next guest is Madhu Cuddy, who's a partner at Arcadia Crypto Ventures. Thanks for joining me here in New York Thank City. You. We're at the Block Party, a private event here. Thanks for joining us during Blockchain Week. Yep. So you guys do a lot of deals. Uh, we had Richard on, who's the uh, managing partner of the firm. Obviously early in the, in the space. Yep. Uh, super early, so you're doing the front wave, get all the best deals. Now it's competitive. You yep. got to read the white papers. You got to get down and dirty. Yes. Look at the pretenders. Figure out what's the the bad deals, the good deals, and then when you get a good deal, make sure it's tailor fit. Yep. Both the tech matches the economics. Yep. Which I find to be interesting because you can have a brilliant entrepreneur come in and, but their token models off. Yeah. So do you see this every day? Yeah, we see this a lot. So especially till last year, things were much more easier, because the you know the most of the people who are coming were genuinely at least trying to do something good. But uh, this year we see a lot of uh, people, you know, who just want to make use of the wave that's happening. Just get on the hype and get some quick yeah. bug. Even uh, traditional like uh, firms that have failed are coming and trying to capture the blockchain hype. Yeah, so throw the hail mary basically. Let's yeah. do an ICO when they yeah. go on. We're going under. Let's throw the hail mary. Yes, yes, that's what we see a lot happening. And uh, then there was a lot of uh, tech projects uh, back in the past, so it was a little more easy to evaluate. So. But uh, this year we are seeing more real uh, business applications coming. I was talking to Richard about these, um, some of the growth things around crypto, and I want to get your take on it because, you know, the internet infrastructure is changing. Yeah. You know, we see the web 1.0. I mean, we hear in these. I mean, all the events I go to, the sim similar kind of conversation. TCP/IP created internetworking and interoperability. Yeah. HTTP created a whole new way to do things. Web 1.0. Yeah. Now we're hearing token economics and blockchain. Yep as a new way, but yet interoperating with the old systems. So you have a whole sea change. Yeah. Um, and there's a real tech enablement. So what's your view on this? Because some people get it wrong on, the, you know, they, they understand the business logic maybe, but they, they want to know what the tech enablement is. What's the tech that's driving all this new infrastructure? Yep. So the internet, you could think of it as a way to share information with the worldwide audience. So blockchain for the first time ever enables all blockchain or you know, the entire crypto infrastructure first time enables uh, humans to transfer value over the wire. So, you know, you could represent one as one over the wire rather than creating, you know, like a duplication of one. So you could have, you know, your own Bitcoin stored on the network and you can access it yourself and you can send that value across. This was never possible in the history of the human race. So that's what uh, blockchain enables, it's the solution to Byzantine General's problem. And uh, we always thought that it was not possible, but for the first time ever, we have a means to achieve that. I also been saying at some of these cube events that every company needs a chief economic officer. You used to have a CTO. Yeah. No, now you need a, C, a chief economic officer. So I got to ask you: when you see a technology, you got to kind of make sure it marries the right model. So in the token world, putting security tokens aside, which I like, by the way. Yeah. Even even I, I like it. Yeah. They're very easy to deal with. Yeah. Utility tokens are different. You have a two types of utility tokens, a work, a work like token yep. and a burn mint equilibrium approach. Yep. What's your take on the two strategies there? And when does, should someone deploy a, a burn mint equal or BME uh, strategy versus say a work token, which is much more of a utility classic? So a burn token is what you know has been the work at least in the past, like for building actual uh, platforms. So that uh, solution itself is not fully solved. So, uh, you know, once we solve that completely, that's when we see much more uh, utility tokens uh, coming on board. But at this point, we see more of the remittance problem that's being solved so that we have a lot of exchanges and, you know, transferring of currency that's being worked on. So uh, it, you can think of it like the email in the Internet era. So though we had all these uh, different, different dot coms, only email worked well. So right now, the transfer of value, the remittance and the exchange is the only thing that's working. But as we go, you know, uh, f forward, we'll see much more, you know, yeah. uh, business models so, coming up. So and really I think, th yeah, I think this could be the year that's going to be, you know, yeah. Ethereum was the moment when, you know, there was the Ethereum moment when you really could, uh, you know, start the next generation on the cryptocurrency moment. So I think this year we could see more business. And I heard some of the conversations here at the consensus event around 
a lot of people are trying to force blockchain and decentralize yep. specifically on a, with a centralized business model. So a yep. lot of people are poo-pooing that, which is, we just call that, you know, blockchain washing, just whitewashing, yep. you know, trying to save themselves. So I got to ask you, I mean, first of all, I mean, I remember having conversations back when the web started. Oh my God, AOL and this 14.4 dial-up is so slow. Yep. It's so much slower than a mini computer. Yes, Technically yes. right, yep. a mini computer was much faster than a yep. dial-up modem to the web, but yep. the web wasn't replacing the mini computers, it was replacing yep. direct mail direct response, analog things. Yep. So the question I want for you to ask you is, what is the analog displacement? What apples to apples comparison should we be making when people throw out these uh, idiotic comments like, oh my God, blockchain's so slow. Because it is kind of slow. Yeah, it is slow. The web was slow too, yep. but it replaced something old. Yep. Well, is it right? Are there, is, is blockchain replacing something old? And what is the right comparison? So the right comparison is that it is, uh, you know, it has solved theoretically the problems. The theoretical solution for these problems we are going to solve the decentralization you know and decentralizing business theoretically we have solved it and we have proved it practically it's possible but it, it is not really there for that uh, you know the mass adoption for real business to onboard it is not reached that scale yet you know as uh, we all know if netflix netflix was the, a business in 1999 it could never succeed but then a lot of infrastructure was built up and on top of it, Netflix worked. So the same thing is going to happen So you're not here. worried about the, the complaints people say it's slow? No, because there's more and I see, you know, each time I go to these conferences, these events, as you would have seen, more and more smart people are jumping in, more money is flowing in. So more the web grew too, more web, people were using the web. So yeah. growth, growth was the key. Yeah, growth is the key and more smart people will come in and they're going to figure it out, you know. When you look under the hood of a company, um, and they come in and they say, hey, I want to get funding, yep. or I have this great business model, or take an existing business and tokenize it. What are the things that you look for in a good ICO candidate, or just someone who's trying to do token economics with a technology trying to transition, not pivot, transform yep. into token economics? So, so a lot of it, there's a, you know, something people call it as a conviction-based inv investing. So that's a lot, you know, that's there a lot in this uh, cryptocurrency space. So we uh, look at you know the technology, underlying technology, how it can solve some of the issues. We look at the broader aspect of the space, how big the space is, so it can it can solve that. And we also look at the team, uh, and you know these three things, if they are in good combination, we believe you know it can be a viable business. And also the partners have to, you know or the founders have to be a little less greedy, you know, like look for you know smaller races. That's Good enough for the next uh, two years. Well, I think, I think entrepreneurs can get liquid faster on token economics. I think it's actually better for the entrepreneur, yeah. my opinion. I want to take change gears so I can talk about you personally. How did you get here? I mean, how did you just wake up one day and say, I'm going to go work for Arcadia Crypto Ventures? I mean, were you scratching a niche? Did you come from finance? What's your background? Uh, my background has been in technology and finance. So we worked with a bunch of uh, Wall Street banks, then uh, private equity firms. So then uh, we, I was running a technology firm when I met Richard, who's uh, very early in the space. So we talked about it, and uh, you know he, you know he had a lot, he he had a lot of interesting questions about the space. So myself and one of my partner, we went back and researched on it. So we came back with these answers, and uh, he had a little more insight, and you know back in the days, much more access to the deal flow, you know during that time. So we worked with him, and uh, loosely we worked as some kind of analyst for him, and. Uh, we started working together, and then you know it f formalized in a bigger way, and now we are. When did you When did you have the moment saying, "Damn, this is going to be good"? I think uh, so. I was once uh, we totally understood the Santoshi paper. At that point, we knew that this is going to change the world. But uh, I even I didn't expect that this would be this fast. So what we are seeing today. I, at that time, I thought maybe we'll see that in 2020, 2021, but the space exploded. The you know Ethereum uh, hitting a thousand, which it hit uh, sometime this year. I was thinking it might happen sometime 2021 or 2022. But which it, sector surprised you the most? Was it just the trading side, the entrepreneurial side? Uh, what, what area of the market is, uh, surprised you the most? The surprising is the worldwide uh, adoption and how especially the, you know, the new generation who was kind of uh, lost a bit of you know interest or i would say um, and not even uh, like they are disillusioned with the you know various uh, other investment model they're jumping in a big way and i think uh, you know this is a uh, you know even regulators everyone has to look for that you know these people have come in 
so let's get it get it right for these uh, these folks so that you know they they have a belief in the system and they can go forward. Madhu, I want to get your thoughts on something uh, I think is important for folks to understand, and that is, is there's a lot of liquidity. Richard mentioned liquidity is an important part Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. So there's a lot of new dynamics and art and science that goes into the trading side of it. Yeah. Much accelerated than a classic IPO yeah. or say a hedge fund kind of deal. Yeah. Where there's always kind of some stuff going on, but yeah. here you can get much earlier on in the process. Talk about, um, for the folks who like now know what a wallet is yep. and might have an account on Coinbase, to the extent that that's their knowledge base, yep. you're so much deeper on some of the trades. Like, what are the dynamics? How would you break down the trading situation on crypto? Give us the crypto trading 101. So the, crypt, uh, the idea is that, you know, there, first of all, um, there are some huge exchanges. So every cryptocurrency out there want to be on these exchanges. So these exchanges have much more trading volume. They have much more liquidity. That's where you want to be. Or, you know, if you're, as, you know, if you are doing some investment and you want to kind of protect it, you want to be in uh, uh, these highly li liquid instruments. So I would uh, stick to top 10, 20 coins for majority of the portfolio if you want to kind of protect your investment. So that has you know, a lot more uh, liquidity. And then uh, around, I would say, you know, 10 to 20 percent you would do, you know, in sectors that, that you are interested in, where you really have some kind of idea. That's where I would call a conviction-based, uh, you know, investment. Where so you, if I want to convert my crypto to fiat currency, yep. you're saying stay with the top trading firms or stay within the sector? What was the advice? Let's just say I'm sitting on if some you're, crypto. If you're a regular, regular investor, right, who's not following the market 24-7, uh, I would say at least, uh, you know, put that uh, like 80% uh, on the top uh, 20 coins where there's much more liquidity and which you know won't go bust uh, t tomorrow. And then uh, you would focus, you know, maybe it, you know, 10, 20 percent of your, this I'm just talking about the crypto portfolio on something you are, uh, you know, you have some kind of conviction. If you are in, in like, let's say you are in uh, uh, automobile space, that's what you understand a lot. So any crypto on that, uh, you know, which you think is interesting, you could put your money there. And I'm at a tech person, so I would put more on uh, technology platforms. What's your favorite tech uh, coins right now and their investments that you're putting money into? Oh, we, you know, we've always been long on uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, so there are a lot of new exciting uh, stuff coming, like EOS, uh, uh, like we are big on Tezos, it's a very community-driven project, we're very excited about that. Uh, then uh, what Block is bringing, Metronome, I think you know, that's going to be huge. They are, these are, uh, like these are very unique in their own ways, you know, EOS is offering something is a challenging a challenger to Ethereum, Tezos also in some form with a very community focus, and Metronome for the first time offers ability to do uh, cross-platform transactions. Madhu, this space is attracting a lot of young kids, and yep. I say kids, you know, coming either out of business school or from a firm like Goldman Sachs, yep. these classic firms, uh, you know, kind of bored. They want to do something new. What's your advice to the next generation coming in, you know, Jump on the wave, fall down, learn it, get off my wave, get off my beach. I mean, yeah. what do you? I mean, what's your advice for the young people? Now, if I, you know, I, you know, if I was, uh, you know, in, in that uh, spot right now, I would, you know, just jump in and go with the flow, and you know, you'll figure out, uh, you know, what you need to do. So, um, you know, would at least uh, rather than stick with the traditional companies, this is something new and exciting, and you know, at least in the next two, two, three years, uh, spend on this. Uh, get your hands dirty. Don't lose. Hands dirty, don't yeah. lose a lot of money. Yeah. Try not to lose a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Madhu, thanks for coming on. Appreciate Thank you. the commentary. We're here, exclusive coverage with the Block Party here at the, the Blockchain Week New York. Exclusive continued coverage with the Cube. We're here in New York City to break down all the action inside the ropes of the industry. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.